Today's episode of the Insect Hunter, I'm gonna show you guys how to cast insects in resin so that you can make an awesome display. So, you want to cast insects in resin. Well, why would you want to do this versus doing a scientific uh, mold? Well, the main thing about doing it in resin is that these are more durable, they're gonna last longer. Uh, to me, they look cooler. Um, they're not gonna be as easy to use for looking under a microscope and scientific purposes, but to me, I enjoy looking at the insects more and being able to share them and show them to people. You could also hand this to a little kid and they can hold it and handle it and it's not gonna be any problem. But a scientific specimen that's on a pin, you're probably not gonna be handing that to a two-year-old because, I mean, the likelihood of them breaking it is super high. It's also really nice to do this for spiders because a spider will kind of deflate. So if you look here at my spider specimen that I did as a diorama, if you look at the abdomen, it has deflated to some degree. It's really just like shrunken in because all the insides of that specimen just kind of uh, got consumed by bacteria and other things and then it just deflated because it lost some of its structure. But in the resin, you're not gonna have that issue because I mean, things are set, in, not in stone literally, but set in resin, so they're not gonna change after you set it. So that's a nice thing about that. Some of the downsides of working with resin is that it can be harmful. You have to have some safety equipment or the ability to have an area well ventilated. I can't emphasize enough that you want to be safe if you're working with resin. You don't wanna get it on your hands. Um, it can cause you a headache if you're inhaling the vapors. Make sure and follow the warnings and the labels of whatever type of resin you're using. So the type of resin I'm gonna be using today is this one here. It's called Tap Plastics Clear Light Resin. It gives you a nice, really clear finish. It's very clear, it looks really nice. I like it a lot. The only problem with this is that it is a very strong chemical. I mean, the smell compared to some of the other resins you can get is just overwhelming. You have to make sure and practice safety with this thing because it is powerful, potent stuff. The way this resin works is there's the resin in here and then there's a catalyst liquid which will activate the resin so it will start to harden. So you add so many drops of this with this depending on what size of resin you're using. But I really like this resin. Another resin that I have used is this Art and Glow Casting Epoxy Resin and I do not like this stuff. It comes highly recommended on Amazon and other places, but this stuff is not clear. The amount of bubbles that this thing produces is just insane. Look at these things. Look at some of these samples of what it looks like. I mean, it's ridiculous how many bubbles this thing has, and I don't like it. It's not very clear resin at all. The one nice thing about this stuff is it seems to be a bit safer. There's hardly any fumes from this stuff, so for kids it's better, but it just doesn't look great. So for me, I say, well, this stuff is basically like garbage to me. But you know, for other things, it could work fine. But for insects, and we want a nice clear cast, this just doesn't work. You'll also need to get some molds. These are the type of molds that I like. They're just a silicon mold. Um, you can get them of all sorts of sizes on Etsy or on Amazon or other places. Get the mold the size you want and make sure you can fit your insect inside of it. Another thing I recommend having is some styrofoam and some insect pins or just normal pins. We're not gonna be piercing the body of the insect with this technique, but you want to have a way to get your insect to fit inside of the mold. This is the most important thing you can do if you're gonna cast insects and in resin is setting those insects up, spreading them. Get their bodies hardened in the position you want before you put them in the resin. It's gonna save you a ton of work and it's gonna look a whole lot better. So let's go ahead and let's do that with a cockroach. I'll walk you through the steps and uh, at the end, I'll show you the final product. So we've got our insect killed. I killed it in alcohol. I pulled it out of the alcohol for about 20 minutes and let it dry off the alcohol. Now I've placed it on some styrofoam and before I do this, I either wanna cut my styrofoam to the size of my mold or I want to mark it with a Sharpie like this. So I've got it marked to know exactly how big this insect can be when it's spread out. Now I'm going to spread it. So I'm gonna take these pins, I'm gonna get the body of the insect set exactly how I want it, spread those legs out, try to make it look as lifelike as possible like this. Just keep spreading those legs, the antennae, everything. Be really careful with the antennae, especially on cockroaches and stuff. They can easily break. I think I broke them, um, at least on one side here 
but I, I still did it anyways. I, I didn't care, it's fine. So anyways, I got everything set how I want it. Now I'm gonna let it sit for one week, let it sit out in my window away from kids or anybody that's gonna touch it, let it sit for a week and harden to some degree so that it's gonna stay in that shape when I put it in that resin. Now I am ready to cast it into the resin. So I've got my resin ready and I'm going to be using a fume hood, which is a device which circulates the air away from you so you're not having to breathe in the air. You want to have really good ventilation, you want to wear goggles, wear gloves, um, and uh, make sure you're protecting yourself because you don't want to be getting um, these chemicals on yourself. They are um, somewhat hazardous. So got to be careful and this is definitely not for children without supervision from an adult to help walk them through this process. So anyways, we've got our mold ready to go. I'm going to mix up my resin, weigh it out, and add the drops of the catalyst. And then I'm going to pour it in. I'm going to first do a bottom layer. So I'm going to do this in multiple layers. So we do the bottom layer first. We'll get that one set. Um, we wait about 20 minutes so that it's somewhat set and kind of gelatinous. Then I'm going to take my insects. I've got the cockroach. It's all hardened. I've got all the pins out so it's ready to go in. Very gently take it and place it into that first level of resin. So I get it in there, firmly press it down so that it stays in place. second layer of resin. So I go ahead and mix that up, add that on top, let it sit for about 20 minutes. Then I'm going to add my final layer of resin once that one has somewhat hardened. I'll add my final layer of resin on top to make sure it's fully encased in the resin. After that, wait about 24 hours. I like to actually wait longer because I've had it not cure perfectly sometimes and then you push on it and then like you leave a thumbprint and it's hard to get rid of that. All right, I've got my specimen. It's been curing for about um, 48 hours or so. I wanna make sure it's 100% dry, but I've got it ready and I'm gonna crack it open with you guys and take a look at this specimen. Just kind of crack that off on the sides as best as we can. Look at this guy. This thing turned out great. This looks really good. Look at that thing from the from the front. It just looks great. I mean, it's got those legs spread. It looks as lifelike as I could get it. That's exactly what you want. Now, on the bottom, I probably should have put a little more resin because there's a tiny little bit that's protruding out, but that was just my fault. I should have added just a little bit more resin to this. But I think it turned out great. I mean, look at how that thing spread. Just as a comparison, I brought a couple other samples that I have um, that I've made here. And these ones I did, I just put them in the resin and I tried to get them spread out in the resin as it was kind of uh, getting gelatinous and, and extra gooey. And you can see it didn't turn out quite as good. Out of all of them, this was the best one I did. It's got a black uh, dye in it on the last layer. But you can see the legs aren't spread out and it kind of almost went in this fetal position. Even if you set those legs out, they kind of harden a little bit um, back into kind of a curled up position. This uh, spider would look a lot better if I had those legs spread out, so um, that would definitely look a lot better. And then I've got like this Sulpugid here, wind scorpion, and you can see it's not very well spread. It's not even flat. It doesn't look quite right. Um, and those legs, again, just kind of curl up into that fetal position. It doesn't look good. Although this is a cool specimen, it doesn't look great because the legs are not spread out. It just looks it doesn't look great um, and this one i didn't have enough resin in the thing in the first place that was my fault but but anyways yeah you can see how spreading out those legs and getting the insect ready beforehand is critical so that you can have a really good uh, specimen just like this hissing cockroach so anyways um, i'm really impressed with how this turned out so as you can see doing resin is a bit more work but I really like it. I love to be able to share it with people, hand it to kids or hand it to people and showcase them to people. You know, you can make jewelry, you can make a Christmas ornament, you can do all sorts of things. It, it's just more creative to me and it's more interesting because it's more user friendly for those that I'm sharing it with. 
For scientists, obviously, it's not the most official way to do it, but for teaching the public and just general people, this is the way to go, in my opinion, if you're comfortable working with the chemicals. If you're not comfortable working with the chemicals, you can do a diorama, and I will uh, make a video on one of those here soon. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Sorry it's been so long in between videos, but I'll keep making content as fast as I can. The coronavirus pandemic has changed a lot of my work and what's going on. But before we leave, I want to add a couple more images to the Insect Hunter Wall of Fame. This first image comes from a user on YouTube named Clognog. Thanks for the submission. This is a caterpillar that's getting parasitized by some parasitic wasps. They'll actually live inside of the caterpillar and consume it from the inside. And then when they're finally fully grown, they will emerge um, and form these pupil cases. And out of each of these will come one little wasp, which will go out and hunt and kill a whole bunch of caterpillars. So they're a great predator to go out and hunt. And I love this image showcasing the awesome biology of insects. And I believe Clognog found this uh, while out just uh, looking around in his yard, so uh, doing some yard work. So uh, there's your motivation uh, for all you kids out there. Do your yard work and you might find some insects. Uh, when your mom or dad asks you to volunteer for that, go do it. This next one comes from Robbie Keen, and he was just collecting insects in his yard and he was able to find this. So he said that during the pandemic, he was struggling to find a lot of uh, time to get out and stuff. So he spent more time doing macro photography. I love the way it looks on this jewel beetle uh, family you pressed today. Uh, it's just beautiful to see the different hairs and the different uh, punk tape marks. There's tiny little dots all over the place which help reflect light. It's just beautiful. That's the thing that I love so much about insects is that they're so small but they're so interesting and there's so many intricate things going on with them. So if you look close enough at anything, you can see beauty and wonder and exciting things. And that's what I love about insects why I love teaching you guys about insects and other arthropods is that there's so many interesting things we can learn about these small creatures. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like. Let me know in the comments what kind of resin you've used and what resin tips you have for casting insects and resin and uh, what else you would say to help other folks out. I'd love to hear too because I'm still working on doing a lot of stuff in resin. But I appreciate you guys and all you do and I want to wish you guys a Merry Christmas and Happy Holidays and uh, Here's to a new year of awesomeness, so thank you guys.